to the club. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Rockstar Rally. I am Jennifer Anderson, your Superstar Director. Um, I'm so excited because we have a guest speaker tonight from Sensi Home Office, which, if you've never been, is legitimately the happiest place on earth. I know they say that about Disney, but it's actually Sensi Home Office. <laughs> I mean that with all my heart. So, what you need to do is promote to directors so you can go to Director Bootcamp, which is at Home Office in Meridian, Idaho. Um, and it's seriously like a life-changing experience. Um, and so tonight we actually are going to hear from Miss Sarah Walker, who you have probably seen on Sensi Family Consultants Facebook training pages. If you've been to Sensi events, you've seen her there. Um, if you're like, if you've dialed into any Sensi training at all, you've definitely seen Sarah Walker. So I'm so excited to have her here with us tonight. I do have a couple of quick announcements. First of all, I need to shout out, you guys, we have four brand new directors. Four, like in April. This is so good. So Shayandra Hampsmeyer, Angel Venable, Nicole Morley, and Meredith Newton all promoted to director this month, which is so incredible. But another amazing thing is that we have a bunch of new superstar consultants, which is code word for future director. So keep an out for these people, Amanda Hand, Lori Gowden, Lisa Madera, Kelly Embry, Tina Sullivan, Kimberly Vanderveen. So many new superstar consultants on top of it. Like I just am literally over the moon. Um, so we are also wrapping up the Sensi Award Year. So in case you didn't know, Sensi Award Year runs from May 1st to April 30th every year. And there are two major awards you can earn. One is the Annual Sales Excellence Award, and that is selling 30,000 PRV in that Sensi Award Year. Um, and in order to do that, that is an average of 2,500 PRV a month. Um, it's a really prestigious award. Earning this award is a really big deal, and it comes with a $1,000 cash bonus. Anybody like a thousand bucks? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so um, the annual sales excellence award, we actually have five earners in Radiant Rockstars already, which is so amazing. So congratulations to Janelle Gretarex, Jenny Knezovich, Alicia Shadan, Andrea Keen, and myself. So Props to all of you guys. And I know a couple of people are super close chasing it. So cheer on Aikila Francis um, and Marnie O'Keefe. They're really, really wicked close. Um, the other award is the annual mentor award. And this is um, very prestigious. So in order to earn this award, you must have sponsored 14 new consultants that certify all within the Sensi Award year. So they have to be sponsored and certified from May 1st to April 30th. Doing this gets you a cash bonus of $25 per certified consultant and it's unlimited. And if any of those frontline go to lead consultant or above, you actually get $50 per lead consultant or above. So you can earn at a minimum, you'd earn a $350 bonus, okay? but it's really unlimited. So you can earn thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars as a cash bonus on top of helping other people start new businesses, which we all love. Um, so here's what I need to tell you. Are you ready for this? So Radiant Rockstars, biggest month ever in the history of forever and ever and ever. Um, we sold $677,000 in one month of Sensi. Guys, that's what well over half a mil. Okay. That's you. That's you. That's me. That's us this month. And so I just want you to know those kind of numbers. We see those numbers in September, October, November, right? Do you know this month that we still have over 48 hours left? Historically, we are last minute folks and we do 10 to 15% of our entire month's volume in the last 48 hours. And we're currently sitting at $614,000 in sales in April, in April. So we are officially our second best month ever in the history of forever and ever. But you guys, we're gonna come screamingly close and potentially even overtake our best month in history. I have goosebumps and it's all us. It's a combined effort. Like it's not just one, it's not just one person, like it's us all together. And it's so amazing. I love to see when we come together, what kind of massive movements we can make. So cheers to you. Um, last but not least, we have a couple of 
things still hanging out for a limited time. Um, LTOs, we have the Mix It collection still available. Let me tell you, if you haven't gotten this yet, like I said, just order three, okay? You're gonna love it, I'm not kidding you. It's the best wax collection we've ever done. It's so fun. All the fun ideas are right inside the packaging, okay? Just in case you haven't, get this. I can't believe it's still available. Um, Cinderella carriage is still available and the Cinderella bar, happily ever after. Um, the Mulan is still available. If you haven't seen, we talked about uh, flipping parties and using the host exclusive starter kit over the last few weeks. Um, right now, Sensi is being very generous and offering us the opportunity to flip PWS orders to our new consultants um, through as we walk through the pandemic. Um, and then last piece of news, in case you didn't see, aloe vera warmer um, is delayed a little bit longer, so it'll be returning the end of May. Um, so that's all I have for news. And I'm done talking. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear from Sarah Walker tonight. Sarah freaking Walker, y'all. Someone put that in the chat. I'm obsessed with that. Yeah, Nicole. It's so true. Sarah freaking Walker. So I have known Sarah Walker for many years and we see each other at all the Sensi events and we always get to chat and hug a little bit before training. And um, I'm, I'm going to let her share her story. I actually asked Sarah to come on and share a lot of her own story tonight um, because Sarah has had like a complete life transformation and it's been a, a, an honor to watch and see. And it's also um, been like encouraging and amazing. And so I want you to hear from her side of view. I want you to hear her story. And I also want you to hear a little bit from, you know, home office's point of view and, you know, what they think, what they think of this whole thing that we're doing. And so um, without further ado, everyone should be muted, um, but, so try and stay muted. And if you have questions, put them in the chat and I'll kind of look through them and we can ask Sarah at the end. But um, without further ado, Sarah, this is the um, largest participant list we've ever had for Rockstar Rally. Wow. So, so. <laughs> well, I'm honored to be here. It's, it's truly a pleasure to be spending some time with you guys this evening. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm using some earbuds. Uh, to kind of block out any extra noise that might be out there. I do have a beagle, I should tell you. Her name is Unstable Mabel. And if she catches a squirrel or if there's someone outside, you might hear some shrieking. Don't be alarmed. It's not a howler monkey. It is my dog. And I will do my absolute best <laughs> to mitigate. <laughs> my kiddo's in the bedroom watching YouTube, so we should be okay. <laughs> but, hey, that's that's real life. And it's it's interesting because we're all – transitioning other than well I guess everybody's transitioning but from a home office perspective um, we have some now very unique insight into what you have all been doing for years and years in your own home you're running businesses you're momming you're homeschooling you're still making a home and it's it's tricky and it's so awesome and humbling at the same time to be able to see and feel and experience some of what you guys are going through on a daily basis. And I, I think that it helps us connect more to you and always you're at the forefront. Um, we never forget who we serve, why we do what we do and who it's for. And being home these last, let's see what it is. This is the seventh. It starts week seven for me. <laughs> so just being able to have that glimpse into the Scentsy life from your perspective is, is an interesting one. So again, I am, I am humbled, I am honored, so very blessed to be a part of the Scentsy family and to share a little bit of my story and how that ties in with Scentsy with you guys today. Um, I do have some pictures to show you, but I think I'm gonna save that for the very end. So I wanted to share my story and uh, talk through uh, kind of this, it, there's a little bit of a training element when you kind of break down the bits and pieces. Um, so I think I'm going to do that first and then show you some of the pictures. So I'm going to exit this really quickly just to pull up my notes um, because I don't want to, hold on, where'd you go? Oh, merciful heavens. <laughs> I don't want to have any squirrel moments here. So I'm going to make sure that I do not get distracted. And I'm just going to pull my notes up so I can see better. Okay, so the big thing tonight, and Jennifer asked me, because she had seen a post, and we've talked about this, like we've shared some conversations over the years, and in fact, two years ago at SFR, we had a, a discussion before one of her breakouts, and 
she was a massive influence and a huge inspiration to me. Um, and you'll see why when I get to this next part, but, um, I, I don't think that I was quite ready at that point, And I'll get to that in just a minute, not to leave too many dangling carrots on this story. Um, but when I posted something last week, she reached out because we had already planned to have me on tonight, but the topic hadn't yet been determined until I posted something on my Facebook and my Instagram last week. And she reached out and said, can you please share this? Um, so I'm, my heart is pounding out of my chest. I'm a little nervous, but um, I'm still going to share it because I think with Cincy, you guys know that often authenticity is the way to go and real and authentic, genuine beats phony pony shows every single time. So whether that is talking to your customers, your team members, a potential team member, a host, your kids, loved ones, if you can be real and authentic, I think that those conversations and those matters of the heart are so much better than being phony and fake. Um, and that draws people together and you're better able to um, connect and attract a little more. So if sharing my story does that, if it maybe inspires or motivates a little bit, then it is a successful day. Uh, <laughs> because I'm trying to apply this to um, your life within sensory elements, like business aspects of this too. So I'm hoping that as I go through some of these concepts tonight, yes, it's sharing um, a journey that I've been on for this past year. And if I'm being honest, it started a long time ago, but really I set the wheels in motion a year ago last week um, on April 22nd, 2019. That was my, that was my day one um, of this past year. So uh, I set the I kind of set the things in motion, but really, as I look at it, it's not just my journey. But if you look at the different components, you can apply this to many, many things within your business. So I have some things sprinkled in for you too. So it's yeah, my story, but it's kind of a training. So without further ado, here we go. So ultimately, my journey is one of wellness. Now I would not say weight loss. Yes, I've lost the weight, but and our, let me rephrase, I've taken off the weight. I don't want to ever find it again. It's not lost. I don't want to find it. It's taken off. It's gone. Um, but it's more of wellness, like mental wellness, physical wellness, whole mindset wellness. This has been a massive journey for me. It's been one of many choices, small choices, big choices, but ultimately how those small, consistent choices led to actions and then those led to big results and honestly and I'm using Jennifer's words earlier she said it's a big victory and I really like that um I think that that's something that I I really resonate with that I love that that wording so I'm going to take it <laughs> okay so my cousin actually asked me last week what the catalyst was why did I start on this journey um a year ago what was it that made me want to change my behavior change my actions and I think with anything, when you reach your lowest point, and we hear this all the time with, you know, different stories that people have, like when you finally reach bottom, you think, oh, that holy crap moment when you're like, I really need to start something new. I need to change. I need to get better. I need to be better. That's what it was for me. Um, I realized that I needed to start taking better care of myself in so many aspects. My son's almost 12. He'll be 12 in July. <laughs> I don't know how we got here. He's just my little baby, but he's almost 12. Um, I've been his primary parent since he was a year old. Um, his dad really isn't that involved with him. Um, I hope he's listening. He's kind of a dipstick. The thought of my son being left with him, if God forbid anything happened to me, um, it's horrifying. And it was honestly eye-opening. And really... I felt like I was missing out on making a lot of the memories with my son, um, playing in the yard, swimming at the, at the water park, riding bikes, hiking, all these things that I used to do but stopped because my body got in the way. Um, I was really, really down on myself. And I don't know if that came across in any trainings or um, attitude or the way I carried myself. Um, I, I don't know. Um, but I was very down on myself. I was very depressed. I was lonely. I did not see my value, my worth, and I, and I think as women too, and men maybe do this too, but I think more so for women, if someone gives you a compliment or says something nice to you, number one, you don't believe it, and number two, you easily pass it off to somebody else, um, and you just don't claim it. 
you kind of have self-deprecating talk and that affects your behavior. But honestly, I was tired of what I saw in the mirror. I was tired of how my body felt lighting around my extra weight. Um, and then when that SFR that I was talking about, when we came back from Kansas City, I blew out my knee <laughs> coming home from reunion. Um, I had a complete ACL reconstruction. Uh, my surgery and my recovery were brutal, brutal. And I am convinced that it was because I had so much extra weight on my body. And I just, I struggled so hard and I hated it. I hated how I felt. Um, I was not in a good mental place, and it started to affect way too many things. Um, so a year ago, a really good friend at work sent me some information about Weight Watchers. And, and again, this isn't a plug for Weight Watchers by any means. I know there are lots of things out there. This is more the program that I use than the one that it helped um, or the one that helped me. But anyway, so she had said that if we get enough people interested, we can actually do a workshop at work on the Sensi campus. And would I be interested in learning more? So of course I was, I went to that information meeting and that was it. I, I started that day, signed up and I haven't looked back. Um, I really liked the tenants that they have. And I think maybe this is why I relate to this program so much because a lot of this stuff, there's overlap with Sensi where mindset is number one. Nutrition isn't like fake food or stuff that if you stop using their product that you're going to gain all your weight back. Like this is real food. I buy it at a store. I make it at home. Like it's legitimate. It's apples. It's <laughs> vegetables. It's good protein. It's eggs. If I want a cookie, if I want a pizza, I can have it. Like it's not manufactured anything. It's real good food. I didn't have to give up my favorite stuff because let's be real. If I have to give up pasta, I'm going to be angry. <laughs> I can make adjustments to suit my situation and the activity doesn't mean sweating in a gym because I'm not a, I, I'm not a gym person. I can be outside walking and hiking and riding bikes, like that kind of stuff that I love. Um, it works with my life and it's sustainable. It's wellness, it's lifestyle. I embrace it. I live it. And this is just what I, what I do now. This is how I want to be. Now I've, I lost myself for a really long time and I finally found her. I think she's kind of a cool chick. Um, so I really don't want to lose her again. Um, and it, things started to fall in line with me because this was right after boot camp and super show director summit last spring. And it finally hit me and we were really focused on growth mindset a lot um, last year. And it hit me like, Holy oh, crap, Sarah, you train consultants every day to shift their mindset, to stop making excuses, to show some self-love, celebrate their worth, have determination, have focus, have grit. When are you going to start practicing what you preach? <laughs> so <laughs> I did it. So I just want to reinforce something. Jennifer mentioned something earlier that I want to reinforce that this is it. Like this is a real, I feel like I'm, I'm home with Sensi. I feel like I'm with my people this is where I feel like I belong. I'm right where I need to be. And everything, it's so weird how the universe just kind of aligns and messages come down in whatever you believe. But it's interesting to me the timeliness of everything and how it just folds together. So anyway, um, I want to talk about mindset really quick. I feel like the sun is shining on my face and I have like this weird freckle or something on my nose. <laughs> Authenticity, friends, there we go. I'm, I'm distracted. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the mindset that you have has to determine your reality. So something that's really brought this into focus with me, um, I talked about that workshop that we have at Sensi uh, with Weight Watchers, but we've had to shift everything virtually. And so we still have our weekly meetings and people are really struggling on, on many levels. I, I totally get that. There are a lot of struggles out there. Like we talk about how excellent the sales are. Like this is the best April we've ever had. Like we're looking at November sales numbers. It's crazy camp crazy pants to me, but I know that there are a lot of people who are still struggling and um, they're snacking and they're having weight gain. What did they call it? Like the pandemic pounds and quarantine 15, all these things. Um, I'm actually in a really good place in that regard. Maybe mentally I might have some, oh, I'm freaking out moments, but with my food, I'm okay. Um, I'm not ultimately worried because I know that I have a plan. I know that I have daily and weekly steps and action items that help me stay focused and help me stay disciplined. I make good choices. And that if I deviate a little bit, I have the grace and self-kindness to reset. 
You know, it's it's easy to stay in our pajamas. It's easy to eat snack upon. It's easy to fall in a funk, but you can't stay there. It's like a little, like if you're on a road trip and you're, you pass this town, it's okay to stop and take a rest. It's all right to get out and wander around and explore a little bit. It's fine. Just, you're not going to stay there though. You're going to get right back in the car and you're going to keep on driving. You're not building a vacation home in this funky place. Okay. Don't stay there. Um, it's easy to make excuses. It's easy to make assumptions. Like I'm bothering these people. This isn't working. I, I don't want to bug them. They just lost their job. They don't have money. They don't want to buy. Guys, I don't, I know that that's affecting a lot of people, but I don't, I think that there are more people who are coming out of the woodworks now who are able to buy, who are able to see that we have a product that matters. Like we have hand soap, we have cleaners, we have laundry products, we have mood changers, all of these things that people are craving when they're at home and they want their home to be comfortable. They're seeking us out. Um, Anyway, so I won't go too far down that way because I, I want to keep this celebratory that you guys are doing amazing things. Like Jennifer just read off all these numbers and these accomplishments and these crazy good promotions. You guys are rocking it. My goodness sakes. Um, and so when you're looking at behavior change and when you're looking at how do we keep this going, if you're trying to influence, if you're trying to change it, it comes down to two questions. Can I do it? Or will it be worth it? Always. Those are the two. So if you're influencing your kids, your team members, your significant other, you have to, they have to be able to answer, can I do this? Is it a question of ability? And will it be worth it? Do I have the motivation? Ability and motivation. Okay. So with ability, you can always seek out training. You can always enhance your skills. With motivation, that inspiration and mindset are going to have to help you out a little bit. Okay. So remember that. Can I do it? Will it be worth it? And then that mindset is going to play that mighty big role. Okay. Um, so I know that sometimes we have a tendency to, um, get down on ourselves a little bit. I certainly did within my journey. Um, and sometimes tough love works, uh, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we tend to respond better when we are kinder to ourselves. We show ourselves a little bit of grace and we celebrate those wins. If you guys are big into habits, like Atomic Habits or even, uh, the Tiny Habits book is really popular right now. Jason's been mentioning it a lot. You're looking for the cue, you're looking for the habit, and then you're looking for that celebration to keep you going. Um, a big thing here, though, if I'm going back to that consistent action, that consistency every single time, even if it's a small step, if you do it consistently, you're still going to go somewhere, okay? So if you fail or if something doesn't go the way that you want it to, you can't quit. It's not going to do me any good on my journey to shame myself or berate myself for eating a dang cookie you know what? I can eat the cookie. I just know now that I can't have five. <laughs> My points reset daily. They reset weekly. And every day is a chance to start fresh. So if some days didn't work out the way that you planned, you can start anew the next morning. You can. It's all right. Um, don't say, okay, well, crap, I guess it doesn't matter. I screwed that up big. I might as well go eat a pizza. Or I told you no one wanted to buy. I knew no one would join my team. What's the point? You can't. You've got to retrain your brain to think, let's pull out some growth mindset here. What can I have done differently? What did I learn? What will I try next time? So when that reset happens, when the next day rolls around or the next incentive period rolls around, what can I do differently next time? What worked? What didn't work? What do I need to tweak? What dials do I need to twist? So for me, if I say, what could I learn? What, is, what, what could I have done differently? Yeah, okay, maybe I had a couple pieces of pizza. It's not going to get me if I do it one day, but if I do it consistently day in and day out, that's where the issues are going to be. So I need to track my points. I need to have fruits and veggies that are cut up so I have really good snacking options when I'm hungry. If I really need a snack attack, I know if I need chocolate, a Hershey Kiss is one point. <laughs> if I want chocolate, I can have it. <laughs> um, so think of like, Maybe better house coaching. Maybe I could have done better follow-up. Maybe I should have given the cell with Amy app a try. Maybe I should have watched this video. Maybe I should have taken some notes. Maybe I should have listened to what my sponsor told me a little bit when she was trying to coach me, right? And then celebrate those wins. Celebrate what you can do, what you can accomplish when you do it. So in my example of wellness, if I say my arms are too flabby or my thighs are like tree trunks, that's self-deprecating behavior. That's just going to spin me on a downward spiral. I need to shift that mindset to say, you know what, with these arms, I can give my son a really big hug. And my legs 
are strong, but they can take me on walks around the neighborhood now so I don't lose my mind in quarantine. <laughs> Celebrate those wins. Um, so I want to get back to kind of that mindset, but also how that pertains to your why or your purpose. Don't get in your way. Um, I personally relate to this because I've stopped myself so many times, and I finally just had to start. I just finally had to, had to take action and just do it. Um, my goal had to be bigger and had to be more important than my excuses, and that's it. I'm not saying it's easy. Like we said, we've, we've established the fact that I like pizza, I like pasta, I like cookies. <laughs> I'm not saying it's simple. It's easier now that I know what I'm doing, but I did go through a learning curve in the beginning, and I'm constantly still learning how to adapt recipes and be okay. Um, I'm not saying that it's not a mental game, because it is, big time. You need to, you got to get your head in the game, but you also have to realize that you can't be too far, like, you got to get out of your head. So it's weird, because you need to get your head in the game, but you have to also adversely <laughs> get out of your head so much, if that makes sense. But I promise you, it's going to be worth it. Because when I realized that my why was bigger and more important than my excuses, that's when the transformation began. Everything that I do every single day has to be in service of my why. I have to serve my why. It keeps me rooted. It keeps me going, even if I'm frustrated or if other people can influence me in a negative or a bad way. I have to stay on track because I'm not going back to before. That train has left the station. It is now on to greater destinations and new adventures, and I'm not going back. So I'm not trying to tell you, like I said, I'm not trying to tell you that you got to lose weight. I'm not trying to tell you that. I'm trying to say that you got to shift your mindset if you haven't already. You have to consistently work your daily actions, your, your weekly activities, that mindset, that it has to be the momentum to carry you forward. So if you're looking at this active in April movement, the numbers in April have been phenomenal. So now we're looking beyond April. What has to happen to carry that momentum forward? So it's amazing, this May momentum, momentum May, and then it can help you out for, you know, a joyous June and all these things, or jump for, jo jump for joy in July. I don't know. I like alliteration. Give me a break. Um, but whatever you're doing, the small, consistent things have to be done to carry that momentum over. Um, anyway, that, that momentum is huge. And Orville shared a story um, weeks and weeks ago. It's funny because I think it was like the first or second week that we were home. Um, but he was talking about how the pipes of wax that we have on campus. So we have operations um, that close down on Sunday. So we still have um, operations Monday through Saturday. But even though the office and operations are closed on Sunday, the wax keeps flowing. There's no one there. It's all automated. We do have people on call and we do have security guards. I shouldn't say there's no one there. Um, the wax has to flow. That momentum has to carry. Because if it stops, if it comes to a complete standstill and completely solidifies, it could take weeks, potentially months, to get moving again. All of that momentum is lost. And we can't afford that to happen. We have to keep that moving so business can keep going. Your business can go. Our business can go. It has to keep moving. That momentum is crucial. So whether that's momentum with wax, momentum with your business, momentum with an activity or exercise in my case, you have to pick something that you enjoy and have that be your focus. So yeah, you're putting the work into other aspects, but the part you enjoy should be a focal point. Because then when things are not so fun, and maybe you have a little bit of a lull, but you know you're going to get right back up again, that will help you carry through. Um, so as an example for this one, I don't like gyms. I told you this already. I don't like elliptical. My ex husband loves elliptical machines, and I can't stand it. And if you do, if you love it, that's great. That's your thing. You do you. I will do me. I can't see that. I, I can't handle it. I would rather walk outside. Um, I still don't like the shame that I felt going to a gym. Um, all the dudes walk around like beefcakes and the skinny minis to stretch them out, belly rolls. I hate being a sweaty mess in front of people. <laughs> I know it's so silly, but I do. Um, so if you tell me that to lose weight, I have to hit the gym, I have to lift weights, I have to run miles, I can only eat lettuce, I can only eat chicken, that's not going to work for me. I need something that's going to bring me joy if I'm going to stick with it. 
So a little bit of history. I danced for years and years. I was captain of my, um, my dance and field team in high school. My mom got me started in dance when I was really, really little. Um, I even taught dance classes. Um, I was toned, I was trim, whatever. Then I started adulting and momming. I gained a full load of weight. We've all done that, right? Um, but I love to dance and I love music. And I actually found this workout, like I, I love to walk and do bikes and all that too, but I found this pound walkout workout class. It is this perpetual state of lunges and squats that you have with drumsticks and you just pound out this frustration with this rhythm and it's to the beat and it's cathartic and it burns fat and it's exercising, but the cardio keeps that burning after. And oh my gosh, you guys, it is so much fun. I've such a blast. It is one of like, it's a crazy workout, but it is so much fun and it brings me joy. And yes, I love to go for a walk. I like to go hiking in the mountains with the man friend. Um, we hunt down the hot springs, go riding bikes, all through it. I, I just love it. So whatever your activity is, whatever brings you joy, think about that. Um, what did you do when you first started your business that you absolutely loved? What did you love doing? What is the fun part? Focus on that to help you in that moment. But that's also going to help you start creating momentum. So like I said, when you're maybe you're not doing the not so fun stuff, that momentum and that excitement and that joy, you know, is there and you'll find it again. Um, so I'll start to wrap up really quickly, and then I'll show you those pictures. Um, last comment here, I can't control the news. I can't control the virus. I can't control the weather. I can't control what my crazy neighbor down the street does. <laughs> but I can control the choices I make and the mindset that I muster. Um, so I've set one year for myself to see what I could do, to see where I would be after a year. And like I said, last year, or excuse me, last week on the 22nd, that was my one-year mark with uh, Weight Watchers or they like to be called WW now, but whatever. Um, it was one year of seemingly small but consistent choices that turned into a loss of 70 pounds, seven zero. I, 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 didn't, I didn't even think, I, I, I don't know what number I thought I would be, but it wasn't that. <laughs> I just would be happy to fit into a pair of pants that fit me and that I didn't have a roll over the top and that I was embarrassed. I don't want, like, a, this isn't a body shaming thing. I know everyone is in a different stage in their life, and I'm just sharing the stage that I was in where I needed. Um, did I just get connect, disconnected? Something's happening to my Zoom. Oh, crap, you guys. I got disconnected. Can you hear me? Your, um, your voice is still on. Your camera just got disconnected. Okay. Okay, good. I'm so glad I dialed in with my phone. I'm like, I better use my phone just in case my internet goes crappy. <laughs> Okay, um, I think I know what happened. Yeah, my VPN got lost. Okay, that's okay. I'll just keep talking. Okay. Um, okay, so the consistency, the mindset, that is crucial, and that helps me tremendously. So my work isn't done. I still have to tame the barking beast in my head. I still have to declare that my goal is bigger than my excuse, and I have to reclaim that person that was hidden for too long. I like I said, I, I like this chick. I, I missed her and I don't want her to be gone again. So again, whether your your journey is one of weight loss, if you're launching, refreshing your Scentsy business, just making it through this new normal one laundry pile or a math assignment at a time, make the good positive growth mindset choices, make them again and again because you're worth it. Like find your passion, find your why, find your purpose and serve it. Um, I, I started my journey a year ago because I swore that I would not go another year of summer pool time where I didn't get in the pool with my kid. Um, Halloween costumes, birthday celebrations, Christmas pictures, family stuff, all that, just feeling and looking the way that I did. And my biggest why, I need to be here for my son. So I set some goals, big goals. I didn't know if or when they'd be achieved, but honestly, guys, I was determined to try. And, and I think that that's what it all comes down to. Are you willing to try? Are you willing to shift your mindset and keep that momentum? So remember when I said those two questions that you have to ask when you're trying to influence or motivate behavior change, can you do it? Will it be worth it? Yeah, <laughs> you better believe it. You can and it will. And I have a quote here that I love. It's by Jane Goodall. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Okay. So there's the end of my spiel, but I do want to show you this picture. So I'm going to try to log back into Zoom again. Let's see what it's going to do here. Oh, come on, Internet. Be my friend. Okay, I need you to stay off. Oh, go ahead, Jennifer. 
I mean, you stay off the internet. I'm there while you um, mm -hmm. try to get logged back on. I'll just say okay. first, thank you so much for coming on here and being with us tonight and sharing your story. I know it takes a lot of guts. Um, has anyone like ever been on a weight loss journey? Probably like most of the people. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a perpetual yeah. weight loss journey for like my whole life. So I, I'm sure a lot of people can, um, can really relate to your story. Um, and, but I loved, I love how uh, like a weight loss journey in our businesses are often, you know, they have such parallels really. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, they and, do. And the, my most favorite part about you know, Sarah mentioned she made a post like a week ago that I was like, please share this, you know, and it, it was the fact that, you know, she really brought to light. She said, I can't control this and this and this and this and this, you know, we can't control what's happening with the world. We can't control what's open or not open. We can't control if your kids are home or not. We can't control all these things, but I can control my choices. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with our businesses. We can control our choices. And I, I will say like what she said about doing things that bring you joy. Okay. So there, it, it is like a discipline thing. Sometimes you just have to be disciplined because, and, and say like, okay, I'm going to work or I'm going to do this thing that's difficult for me or do this thing that's hard for me. or I'm going to do this thing that's uncomfortable for me, but it's a lot easier to make choices that are great for your business when your business is full of things that bring you joy. Right. And I am a huge fan, huge fan of playing to your strengths and not like stressing yourself out over, you know, let's say, let's say you love, love online parties and you don't want to do any home parties or you're terrified of home parties, right? Or whatever. Girl, play to your strengths. Do your, do your online parties and rock at them. Like be an expert. Like I'm such a fan of doing things that bring you joy and playing to your strengths and doing things that, you know, you're naturally good at. I'm not saying don't try new things and don't do hard things and don't, you know, like stretch yourself. That's not what I'm saying, but you can't beat yourself up. You know, like Sarah was saying, she can't beat herself up for having a slice of pizza. It's, I loved what she said. She said, reset daily. That was like a little aha moment for me because how, how many of you have had a day in your business where your to-do list looks like this and maybe it's so overwhelming that you just kind of curl up in a ball and die in the corner and you don't do anything and you end up just binge watching Netflix and not actually checking anything off of your business and then the next day comes around and you're like well crap I screwed yesterday might as well just screw this week I'll start again on Monday right and then next Monday comes around and you fail again or you don't check off all the things you said and so you're like well screw it. I'll just screw this whole month. I'll, I'll try again next month. Right. This is what we do. But I love that. She said, reset daily. Like, why aren't we giving ourselves that grace? Right? Like, why aren't we giving ourselves that gift of resetting every day? So today was a wash. Okay. Tomorrow's a new day. Reset daily, reset weekly. I love that. I love that. I thought that that was so beautiful. Um, and how, how valuable are those two questions? Can I do it? And will it be worth it? How valuable is that to your Cincy journey? Um, the last thing that I love, she said is, you know, and maybe you've heard this before, but your goal, your why has to be bigger than your excuses. It's so simple. It's so simple. If you find yourself making excuses and letting those win, letting those be reasons that you don't find success, it means your why isn't really your why. You've heard me say that before, but it means your why isn't deep enough. It's not strong enough. It's not really true because if it was really true, then your excuses could never overtake it, right? So if you're in a point in your business or in your life where excuses are clouding your success, then that means you've got to go deeper. You got to, you got to do a little bit of introspection. You got to do some hard work and find out what do I really want? What am I really working for? And so... Um, I, I loved it. I loved it. Thank you so much for sharing tonight, Sarah. Were you able to get connected at all? No, it's, it's trying to connect some wonkies going on with my Wi-Fi, So that's okay. Um, I can always send you photos if you'd like, but, um, I'm so glad that I've called in with my phone. <laughs> I know, me oh, too. oh, oh, hang on. It looks okay. like it might be working. Oh, mercy. And Come on, Zoom. What? You can do it. Take your time. And you know what else too, so many people in the comments, um, Sarah echoing, you know, just 
my, my sentiments, but also so many people identifying with your weight loss journeys. Um, you know, Ca Colleen Regan has lost over a hundred pounds. Um, oh, yeah. Alyssa Fisher has lost 160 pounds. Um, oh my gosh. Someone else, Trish Montello has lost over 200 pounds. So oh my heaven. just amazing. like amazing, incredible. I have goosebumps, like just even saying oh. that. So you guys are really freaking amazing and how inspiring. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of this so awesome. in my life. For real, um, I love you. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> All right, dear heart, I am in your personal meeting room. Ooh, okay. I have internet again. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming back. Oh, my heavens. My goodness sakes. All right, how are we doing here? I'm going to pop my video on. So sorry, guys. Thank you for being patient. You're the best. Okay. Okay. How's that? Are we good? Can you see me in there yet? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Are we good? It's good. Okay. So let's see if it'll let me share my screen. It's you guys can still hear me okay, right? It's still your um, phone. Like, no video. Hmm. Oh. Becca says she can see me now. Oh, okay. So that's good. I might just have to find you. I have to okay. Oh, there you are. Hi. I'm um, going to spotlight your video. Okay. Okay. So here are my photos. Let's see here if I can share. Okay. So just kind of walking you through this one here. Um, this first one here was when I did 20 pounds. So that was at reunion last year. Um, so when I hit reunion, it was probably like 20, 25-ish. And then this one at Christmas when we had the Christmas lights at Sensi. Um, I pulled a picture where I had that same coat <laughs> from the year before with my kiddo, and it was Christmas time. And then this one over here, the December to December, that was the day that we got our Christmas bonuses from Sensi from a year different. And so I was like, holy bajoli, that is so different. Um, and then on this one, this is my why right here, friends. This is my little man, Owen. And so a while ago, I think it was last fall. Yeah, because the picture says October, but that 10 year challenge to see where you were 10 years later. Um, so I pulled a picture of us from 09 and then to 19 and there we were. <laughs> so he's just a cutie patoot and I love him. Um, and then this one where I said that I wasn't, I wasn't feeling valuable. I was very lonely. I felt like, um, no, but I, I didn't love me enough, and I didn't think that anybody else would either, and I was really quick to dismiss, you know, eh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hide out, I'm just going to do my own thing, I don't need, mm -mm, nope, nope, done, uh, but I was able to open myself up a little bit and now have an amazing person in my life to, um, to go on adventures with, so there he is. And um, then here you go, here's a before and after, this is at the 70 mark. Wow. Um, yeah, and so that was from a Facebook Live I did, or no, I think it was a training call from a year ago. Um, it was funny because it had a heart on it, and it was like this little white heart here. And afterwards, <laughs> Deb came in, and she's like, Sarah, um, I think it's the coloring on the camera, but it looks like you have a whipped cream wedding dress. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, I remember <laughs> You remember that? And it was like this flesh toned shirt, but it had this white heart. It looked like it had this whipped cream wedding dress on. It was hysterical. Um, and then, yeah, when we were in um, Anaheim for reunion, um, it was my 40th and my son's 10th. And so we did our, our birthdays in a big way. And so we extended a little bit after SFR and stayed at Disney. And that was that. And I was like, holy crap, I want a picture of Mickey and Minnie, but I am this, where, where did, this isn't me. Like this, I just don't feel like me. Um, but there you go. There's a picture from last weekend that I'm starting to feel like Sarah again. So anyway, just wanted to share those. Thank you guys for looking. Thanks for listening and for being patient with my connectivity issues. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Oh, that was so good. And Sarah, your pictures are just incredible what what an amazing accomplishment and seriously an inspiration to all of us um thank you so much for sharing with us tonight and being vulnerable um but also like 
you know, teaching us how we can relate real life stuff to our businesses and how everything is, is just sort of intertwined. And so, um, it's awesome. Lots of love for you in the chat. So I hope that you're able to read that chat and feel That's the so love. Great. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It was my pleasure to be here. So thank you so much for honestly everything that you guys are doing with your businesses day in, day out. It does not go unnoticed. And we know that you are working so very hard and we are all legitimately one big Sinky family and we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you for all you do. Yeah, we are. All right, guys, in case you didn't know, you're with the right company. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We definitely I hope, are. I hope you feel. I hope you feel even more. You're with the right company tonight. You know who who gets to have home office employees and home office staff come to hang out with them. I mean, for reals, guys. This is this is way past working hours anyway. You know what I mean? It's seven o'clock where she is. So um, okay. pretty pretty dang cool. I love you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope that this was valuable mm -hmm. and worth your time. And um, I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good night.